Hey guys, today we are installing a four camera surveillance system from Rio Link. I'll show you my install location. I'll run the wires from inside my home to the outdoor area where I'm going to be doing the install. We'll get those cameras mounted. And lastly, we'll check out some footage. As you probably saw in my last couple of videos, this is a 4K security camera system in a box. It includes four 4K cameras and the NVR or network video recorder and the required cables. The system costs around $500 US. In these videos, I unboxed the system and I introduced all of the technical specifications and initialized the NVR to make sure that it's up and running with no problems. Now it's time to do the camera install outside in my proposed location. If you're not sure where to install your cameras, do check out my video on planning your system installation. The Reolink system that we are installing today is model RLK8 800D4. The cameras are model number D800 and require a wired connection to the recorder to support that high quality video and to power each camera. I plan on installing my cameras here on the post by my front door. One camera on each side of the post will give me the perfect view along the side of my house, my front door, my garage doors, and lastly my driveway. Unfortunately, I don't have easy access into the two sections of soffit above and I don't want to drill holes into any of these and cause damage. Since I move my cameras around so frequently, I don't want to be replacing soffit because this is not a very enjoyable activity. Instead, I'm going to use the top of this pillar as my install location. So here's the plan. I'm going to use direct burial cables and run them inside a conduit outside of the basement of my house, through the wall, and then down into the ground. They will exit the conduit and travel about eight feet and re-enter a second piece of conduit and travel up the pillar and they will terminate inside of junction boxes. Then I'm going to mount the cameras on top of the junction box covers. This keeps the cable safe from the elements and gives them a neat finished look. It also prevents anyone from sneaking up and snipping the wires. I can even replace the cameras in the future with only damaging the covers of the junction boxes, which can easily be replaced. Reolink does sell junction boxes for this very purpose with pre-drilled holes to match the camera's mount. I'll be using a standard electrical junction box from Home Depot because I need a different configuration of holes. Plus, with the standard junction boxes, you have many more accessories and options available. Before we get started, let me just say that running wires can be very challenging and there are many different approaches depending on the scenario. Mine today is pretty unique. I'll be digging trenches, drilling holes in my home and installing conduit. I've decided not to use Reolink's included network cables for this install. They are okay, but not the best quality. And since I have a lot of cable left over from a previous project, I'm going to be using these in this situation. I'll be running 12 cables from right here. This is where I'll be installing my NVR. The cables will then go up into the ceiling and run the length of the house to the other side where they will exit the wall through a hole. I plan on adding additional network devices outside in the future and since I don't have those cables ready yet, I'll be installing a patch panel right here where the cables will be entering my basement from outside. So what's a patch panel and why am I using one? Well, it's not required to install cameras, but given my setup and future plans, it will make things a lot easier down the road. The panel will allow me to connect future outside wire devices to my network or NVR by simply running a network cable through the hole in the outside of my house. These cables would then plug into the panel just inside. And remember the back of the panel will be wired to my network or NVR. Once the ceiling is enclosed, running those wires the length of my home will be a challenge or pretty much impossible. I will install an access panel here so I can add and remove network devices easily. There are additional utilities I will need to access from this location, so a panel here will be perfect. Here's a quick time lapse of how I extend my network using a patch panel. I strip off the cable jacket, exposing about an inch or two and a half centimeters of the four twisted pairs. Untwist them as much as possible for them to reach their dedicated slot. Use the punch tool to push them into the slot where they will make the connection. 
I did this about 12 times for each of my cables from my networking room. I also labeled them so I know which port on my panel they are connected to. On the front here, this is where I will connect my cameras from outside. I'll add a link in the description for the patch panel and the spool of cable that I'm using if you're interested. Since I'm installing an irrigation system, my sprinkler pipes and network cables will share the same ditch. I rented this from Home Depot and trenched over 1,200 feet or 365 meters in about four hours. Some of the more delicate areas I needed to dig out by hand. The cameras will be installed on top of the pillar and the wires will travel down the conduit they exit the conduit and go underground using this trench. They will work their way back into this conduit, up into a box, and through this hole into my house where they will be connected to the patch panel which is already wired to my network room. I'll be using direct burial cable to go underground from here to here. I've used this before in the past and it works great. I had no issues over long distances, even when the ground is frozen solid. Here is a piece that I'll be replacing today as a part of this project and it's still in perfect condition after living underground for four years. So looking at this conduit box, I already see an issue. I don't like the size of the conduit exiting my home. It needs to be bigger because I plan on installing additional cameras and devices around my yard for this channel. So here at Home Depot, I'm picking up a larger box and some replacement conduit. I also grabbed a two and a half inch or 64 millimeter hole saw bit. I'll pull out these old wires and remove the old conduit. The saw bit attaches to my drill, but to keep it steady, I can't use the pilot bit due to the previous hole that's in the wall. I created a large guide by drilling a hole into this wood to guide the saw bit into the siding. Once in, I can remove the guide and then slowly remove the layers as I go. With the hole drilled, I'll now cut some conduit in super fast speed and glue it to the box. Now we can insert it into the wall and attach it with the screw. I'll need to get this sealed up with some caulking and spray foam sooner than later. And it looks like I'm going to need some touch-up paint here to finish the job. I have these three underground wires here from a different project. I'll get those fed into the hole into the house and then get that box covered and sealed. One of these three lines are actually connected to my front fence camera. I just removed a couple of older cameras from the top of this pillar and check out the bugs and spiders that have been living in here for the past three years. What a mess. We have a disturbing amount of critters here in the summer and I'm constantly cleaning cameras. Next here we have all of the junction boxes which the cameras are going to be installed upon. Since they will need to be spray painted to match the color of the pillar, I'm going to place them in this box and give them three coats of paint. I cut the four cables, one for each camera to the right size. It's long enough to travel from the top of the pillar down underground and then back up the conduit and into the house and into the patch panel. Next we're going to insert the four cables into the conduit using a feeder wire. Let's leave a couple of feet at the top for where the cameras will be attached. I'll stand it up here next to the pillar and leave a little room at the top to secure it. I had this block of finishing wood which needs a hole in it so the wires can be fed through. I'll screw that into place and looks like I'm going to need to touch up this paint in the spring. Now it's time to pass the cables through the trench and up into the conduit and into the hole into the wall. And of course we'll put the cover back on so it's sealed. Now I can start installing the junction boxes. I use 90 degree elbows with openings so that I can feed the wires through easily. I'll fast forward this since this process here took about an hour. Next here I'm terminating the wires with RJ45 connectors and this is where the cameras will be connected. I strip off the two jackets of the underground cabling, separate the wires into their proper order, slide on the connector and crimp it into place. I'll run the wire inside and magically terminate the other ends and plug them into my patch panel. When installing the cameras, I'm going to show you an example here using the weather sealing coupler. This coupler is a smaller one than what was included with the ones in the kit. This gland also fits the thicker underground cable better than Reolinks. I next coil up the cable 
and screw the cover on. Once that's in place, it's time to attach the mounting plate. Then position the camera within its bracket so that it will be pointing in the right direction and attach that to the mount. For the remaining cameras, I'm not going to use the weather sealer since the junction box is already providing enough protection. While I install the cameras here, let me just say that the junction boxes are a little small. I wish there was a little bit more space inside, plus the underground cabling that I'm using here is kind of stiff and difficult to curl up inside the box. I need to make a few touch-ups in the spring, but I'm happy with the results given this special scenario. Looks like we're just about done. Pretty slick from a distance and you can't see the conduit going up the pillar because it's hidden by the drain pipe and the color matches perfectly. Lastly, we need to get the cameras plugged into the NVR and check out some of that daytime and nighttime 4K footage. Let's start here in the driveway where I'm holding the license plate. Here at 60 feet or 18 meters, I'll stop the picture so we can zoom in digitally and check out that image. You can read it perfectly. This is awesome, such a great 4K image. Outstanding resolution here and awesome colors. This downspout, however, is a little close to the camera and might cause a little glow at night. So I may need to shift the camera to get this out of my shot. Reflections can cause glare, making the camera think it's a bright light and automatically adjust the image, making the rest of the image darker. You're going to end up losing detail. So here's a shot with too much downspout in the picture, causing too much reflection. I'm going to move the camera a little bit to the right to get rid of that for now. I think I might move that downspout in the spring to the other side of the pillar and that will allow me some more coverage here off to the left and less overlap on the right with those garage doors. Here at night with my house lights on, we are in black and white nighttime mode and the details are great. The license plate is reflecting light because of the IR night vision lights from the camera. We just totally expect it. Moving on to the garage doors, I like this image so I can check to see if the garage doors are shut or if there's anybody messing around out there. Perfect image, again, I'm so impressed. And the nighttime footage here with the lights on. We're still in color mode, great detail. I really like this picture. Now with the house lights off, we switched into black and white mode. Again, great detail, perfect image. Looking down the side of the house here, you can see that there are no missed frames, a beautiful smooth image. The NVR captures everything just perfectly. And jump over to nighttime. Again, looks great to me. And lastly, we have the front door cam, which is about seven or eight feet from the camera. And it provides an awesome vantage point. Great colors, great details. How could you not love that? All right, guys, thanks for letting me share how I installed my 4K security camera system in this location and showing you that outstanding video quality. When installing these devices, running network cables can be a challenge, especially when there is limited space behind the wall or the ceiling area where you're installing them. Installing them onto an eave or to a wall where you have space in behind the mounting surface would definitely make things easier. Just the same, I'm happy to share how I did my install today with the patch panel, the trencher, the conduit, and the junction boxes. Make sure to check out my other real link videos and links to everything seen here today can be found in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me. And please subscribe for more home tech DIY projects that you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.